Ladies and gentlemen, what's going on? Welcome back to another video, a monthly recap here in session. Man, I'm very, very uh, surprised. I'm pleasantly surprised that we ended the month in the green. I did not think we finished green and we did. And so it's a big step in the right direction when we compare month over month with our trading, right? Now we'll, we'll take a look at January in a sec just to see the, the difference here in the uh, in the PL, but I definitely like what I'm seeing here. Uh, a lot of good green days coming into the end of the month and carrying over into March. And so we were off to a good start in March. It's exactly what we wanted to be seeing around this point in time. And so we're looking forward to keeping up the consistency. So February month in review, let's go to the detailed section. I'm going to finish the month up $7.30. Very grateful for this right here. Last month we ended down, I believe, $1.25. So big step in the right direction. As you guys will see, my share size here was still very, very light. I mean, I'm trading, you know, 10% uh, of, 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 of my normal volume, right? So it's kind of crazy. Or, or is that 20 let's say 20 percent 20 percent of my normal volume uh which is usually around thirty thousand shares per day right now just around six thousand shares per day very very interesting stuff there in terms of how i've been tampering it back not taking as many trades not being as aggressive with the share size and so right now the equity curve uh very sideways so as we look at the month average winner 34 dollars average loser 29 not good in the sense that we do want to have that two to one, despite it being a little bit slower. The accuracy, a little bit better than last month's accuracy. Last month we had about 40%, so we're up 5% there, which is good. Good step in the right direction. The largest gain, 190, largest loss, 150 on the month. And trade PL for uh, standard deviation, 49.06, profit, profit factor one, right? One, 0.0 average hold time winning trades 31 seconds average hold time losing trades 28 seconds scratch trades about two minutes so this is the metrics and you know it's crazy that in the area where i'm most profitable uh historically i'm actually red 263 between 9 30 and 10 o'clock very interesting we even made something pre-market right for once we made a little bit of something pre-market a little bit of gains around 11 a little bit in into the afternoon nothing crazy very small numbers i mean to compare this over to february last year last year february we did a couple thousand dollars i think like three four k or something maybe a little bit more so it's definitely a big difference and you know for me it's all been uh slow and steady to this point slow and steady not forcing it not looking to over trade not looking to overdo it bfri down 374 was my biggest loss and this stock here i might be red on a decent amount overall let me let me just quickly check something here bfri is it on this list actually it's not so maybe i'm a little sideways on it because I remember having some bigger losses on that one last year. Uh, but anyhow, so let's come back here into zone uh, for February. We'll look at the overall metrics in a sec. So, yeah, you know, a bit of a slow start to the year. Things have been picking up recently. I, I would hope we can continue to see more momentum. But very slow start. INDO, the best stock so far for the month. KAVL, AREB, you can see the drop off right here not a lot of uh, momentum for me at all uh, so far and stocks between 10 and 25 million have not been doing well and below that not uh, not doing well either so 25 million shares or more right in terms of volume is, is usually the area i'm doing a little bit better on so for those of you who might want to check performance relative to the 50 moving average and uh, some of these other uh, metrics that they'll have in here you guys can go ahead and take a look. For me, I don't look into these other metrics as much, but some traders, it's very helpful for them. So just to, to quickly show that. In relation to the SPY, when the SPY is actually up, I'm down so far this year. And when the SPY is down, I'm green. Very interesting. For me, 
and a lot of people might look at that and say oh, that's definitely strange now i'm not green a, a crazy amount but if let's refresh the metrics for the overall metrics here right in the overall metrics you'll, you'll see that i'm green in all of all the areas when the spy is down one percent anywhere from zero to one percent i'm up twenty five thousand and when the spy is up anywhere from zero to one percent i'm up twenty thousand and this is just majority of days 90 percent of the times this is where the spy is going to be um and then we'll have days that are really volatile so how often is the spy really up over two percent so this might have been just a few days and how often is it down anywhere from one or more than that and so I think as long as you're profitable, you'll have green metrics across the board. So I don't really look into that stuff too much. Now, this year is a little different when we when we talk about what's going on overseas and that kind of thing. It definitely plays a little bit of a role into the uh, small caps as well, right? Not just the large caps, but it seeps down a little bit. And it's one of those rare situations where, where we weren't seeing a lot of stocks give breaking news in relation to to the conflict that's going on because throughout every major catalyst that we've ever had whether the trade wars with china when trump was in office covid ebola badge cams when we had all those protestings and even riots going on here in the states uh for uh police brutality that kind of thing we had badge ca uh badge cam companies go crazy right we had Chinese stocks, EVs, crypto. I mean, when, when I, blockchain was big, man. Blockchain brought a round of momentum like no other. We had AMC, GameStop, EXPR, meme stocks, right? The meme stocks category. And so this, no matter what the catalyst is, good or bad, we've all, always seen companies do really well uh, because no matter what the situation is there'll be a few companies that will be able to profit right not many but maybe a few and so that's what we usually look forward to in the colder markets or the, let's say the markets with the weaker catalysts right the negative catalysts and so far this year we haven't really seen a lot of them but we've seen a few we had a few stocks do 50 percent, maybe even 100 percent. ispo definitely comes to mind a few of the other ones that we've had over the last two three months uh, but today, definitely something that's going to, uh, today, well, not today, yesterday, we had something that was going to suit the criteria when we talk about energy and gas, right, and INDO and IMPP and some of the other ones we had here at the beginning of March. So, you know, hopefully we see a little bit more of that and so we can see some more green days, right? But this is the performance in relation to the SPY. It's why I don't really put too much of an emphasis when we do have the momentum you know kind of shift a little bit depending on what's going on in the economy but here we are here is the drawdown here for the month and you can see it was a very choppy month for me man i'm gonna lose 2500 and make 2500 finishing slightly in the green ever so slight into the green right here so i mean there's not too much to go over right we had 10 winning days eight losing days into this new month is where we got to start switching this up. We got to get this better. Can we do 15 to 5? 16 to 4? Right? Can we switch that up a little bit and start seeing some more green days? Now, on the 10 green days, we're averaging $94. Right? Uh, 945 total gains. A volume of 5,000 shares. My volume has been extremely light recently, extremely light. And th so looking over, right, on the losing days, uh, eight losing days, and this is surprising stats. I'm actually averaging a little bit more on the losing days than I am on the, on the winning days, which is very, very uh, disappointing for me because I want to try and have a two to one. This is a negative ratio right here, a negative uh, win profit loss ratio. So volume, and I think this is part of it, uh, slightly more volume on the red days, 2,000 shares. You always want to ease it down when things are slower and not be too aggressive, not be overly aggressive. So that's one of the things I definitely have to look into to, in, into this new month to be careful of, to be aware of. So on the winning days, we got 51%, which is around my average. 
on the on the losing days around 30 percent which is definitely not good and i believe might be around the average as well right so average winning trade 40 average uh on the winning on the winning days and a loss of 22 so this is not bad right i'm getting confused between win loss ratio and profit loss or i guess this would be the win loss ratio here and profit loss ratio up top right so we do have a two to one right here which is good uh for the green days red days not so much right not so much right there 26 to 36 no good average hold time 45 seconds on the green days for the winning trades and losing trades 33 seconds let's see how that compare 10 seconds for the winning trades and 23 seconds for the lose so is this a confidence thing on some of these red days is it like a lack of confidence I'm not holding as longer. Is that what it is? It's always hard to tell, but maybe I could do some investigation into that. I can keep an, uh, an eye out. Right, so compare. Let's compare. Let's compare this month to last month. Right, let's see. Int last month versus this month. Uh -oh. Well, okay, it's going to give us May. Not May, uh, March. So let's come back here to January 1st. To January 31st and February 1st to February 28th. Generate report. So things are slightly better, right? And this is this is all it comes down to for me. In, improvements, right? And we improved all across the board for the most part, right? Uh, in terms of gains, we actually went from red to green. So despite my metrics being like baby metrics, I mean, for those of you who've been watching me for a, a, a long time, you guys know it's like, you guys have seen me produce big numbers. And so this right here is always humbling. It reminds me what, what trading really is all about. And it's about slowing it down when things are, are tough, you know, because I could have easily just kept my same size and this could have been, you know, 5,000 in the red, 6,000, 7,000, 10,000 in the red. I mean, it, it, whatever amount I would have let it become, it would have been. So, you know, to have that level of control and not blow things out of proportion to keep the overall perspective of where I am, what I'm trying to do, how I'm trying to progress. For me, this is huge. The numbers might be small. But this is big. I mean, this is this is big time for me, right? Coming up, coming out of one of my slowest periods, uh, and I'm saying coming out because it seems like things might be picking up, right? Anytime we get a thousand dollar day, you know, I would like to think the momentum is coming in a little bit. So we'll see. But this is huge, man. All across the board improvements, and so for anybody who is a beginner trader, right, who is a little bit newer to the market, or maybe you've been trading for a while, and and you know your metrics are on the lower side, right? We got to still cherish these kinds of metrics because it's a huge improvement, man. Huge improvement from red to green. Despite the numbers being small, we traded less volume, right? Our average per trade gain slash loss, uh, we came up and it's actually a positive number this time, right? So those are the things that I'm looking at. We took a similar amount of trades, 154 versus 161. We had better accuracy this time. So we increased a little bit across the boards, which is good right there, right? So these are the things that I'm looking at, and it's going to give me even more motivation to keep pushing, right? You know, to keep keep grinding and keep, you know, trying to up it and be a little bit better. Average winning trade last month versus this month, it's uh, a little bit better last month, actually, right? We had $60 compared to $34, and so this month, in, in, in terms of February, we didn't see as much of a, a bigger, uh, a big difference in the win-loss ratio there, All right? So coming on down, average hold times, about a minute, 28 seconds, let's see, 31 seconds. So my, my hold time has been, and, and, and a part of that is that we took, why am I starting so much? We took a little bit more scalp trades this towards the end of this month here, February. We took a few more scalp trades and I think that definitely made a difference, right? So that's the good thing we're improving. 
we've gotten a little bit better and my equity curve right here looks like an ABCD between the two months it's kind of crazy let's look at uh, let's see I want to look at the details and over the last two months So over the last two months, right, and a lot of times, our a lot of the times, our equity curve will look like a stock chart. And what does this remind us of, guys? What does this remind us of right here? An old-fashioned A, B, C, D setup, right? An A, B, C, D setup. Can we see that W and then the break over the pivot? So 32 right here is the pivot. Can we rip over 32? And start to surge up it's not quite the double bottom right we had a uh, we didn't come down as much right we didn't come down as much and so when we do you know come into March right what's today's date let's go to the third when we come into March we start to see the breakout happening and so this is what it's all about for me man you know I could care less about the accuracy the percentage on any of that stuff because you know we have a choice to make we, we can make the decision whether to not trade or to trade through and for me trading through gives me more of a feel for what the market is all about right it gives me more experience i believe it makes me more disciplined because if i hadn't traded between january 1st to now let's say right to the end of february I wouldn't have really gained any experience and what that would have done it would have wiped my metrics clean you know I would have been at, instead of my accuracy being at 44 right now it would have been you know with the last couple of days maybe it's 60 percent 70 percent but that's not what I'm about here I want to push through and so for next time I can be better right for next year for in the next couple of months or, or even now, if we're going to continue on a slower, uh, slower patch, can I be able to be, be better in this type of a market? Right? That's what it's all about for me. And so we start to see a bit of a breakaway, right? What is today's date here? Today is the 5th. So when we include, when we include the 4th, which was Friday, we start to see the breakaway. And this is what it's all about for me, man. Can I keep the losses small to the point where I can start to see the explosion? And that's what's happening right now. Have we churned a lot? Yes, we did, right? We churned a lot right here, but it's all part of what it is. Sometimes the metrics don't have to be pretty, right? And it's something I'm learning even now, like the metrics don't have to be pretty. At the end of the day, when the year is finished for 2022, and I look back and I see how much money I've made versus how much money I've lost and the difference that's going to be the main thing that's going to be the number one factor because if I mean you we just never know I, I I'm very optimistic I mean I could finish this year with lower lower accuracy than I did last year and make more money so you know do I want a higher accuracy or more profits like what what's what's the big thing there uh you know and so for me that's what it is experience over you know that fancy stuff so not to say and this is not to say that we don't want good metrics because we do but we got to be careful how we look at things and to not get ourselves out of shape uh if things aren't going our way so we got to adjust and flex right be flexible be willing to change be willing to make the adjustments and look forward to the improvement so you know we're still a very green trader man when we come back to this win loss versus days and we wipe this clean you know this is my career right here in terms of when we do look at profit loss and win win loss ratios right profit loss ratios i'm still the same trader who was up ninety thousand versus a thirty thousand dollar loss you know so there's a good three to one for for us right there to, to give us some encouragement to keep pushing to keep things small and as time progress here we're going to increase the volume and these green days are going to go from 317 even to this day right right now right now with all those slower days i've had i'm still averaging 317 dollars on my green days can you imagine right 
So, red days, can we continue to work on this, right? And with share size being bigger, the red days will naturally be bigger, but we want to continue to try and minimize it as much as possible. So, for me, that's what it's all about. And yeah, if you are a new viewer, keep in mind some of the metrics might be skewed in terms of the, the whole time because recently over the last couple of months, let's say six, seven months, maybe a little bit more, I changed the way how I import my metrics to TraderView. It's now per execution and not the aggregate of the trades, right? Because it grouped together a bunch of executions, which would make the whole time look longer. But in terms of profits and everything else, we're all the same. All right, so yeah, man, let's keep working. Let's keep grinding. I look forward to the momentum, you know, and what will it be? I've lost $106,000. Can you guys imagine? Absolutely nuts. I've lost $106,000 so far since I started day trading. How many people are willing to lose a hundred grand, you know? How many people are willing to lose a hundred thousand? And they say the good traders make more then they lose and so you know that's the big thing for me we had this drawdown our drawdowns have been getting bigger this time we, we got a hold right here we didn't come down as much as we did last time in, in 2020 towards the end of the year that was this drop off right here so you know looking to keep it small not looking to get deep into the red i'm gonna try my best to keep these and with, with bigger share size sometimes it's natural that things get bigger right but i haven't really increased my share size a lot in this area here so I want to be very careful moving forward. Can we keep this to a minimum and keep looking to attack uh, on the upside? So to end it off, let's take a look at the equity curve right here. All right, let's look at the equity curve. This is what's going on. So when we talk about that ABCD, you know, it's almost like a flat top breakout that's happening right now. And so can we continue? Can we keep it up? Can we keep up this... Uh, you know, good trading over the last week and a half or so and start to accelerate and pull away from this flat top. Can we see 62, 64? So just like a stock chart would, just like a stock chart would be moving. That's how I'm looking at it. And I'm looking forward to breaking out here. Can we see 70, 80,000? The last hot streak, we were sideways too before, right? From September 21st, all the way to October 18th. So essentially this one was a full month. We were up, then down, then up, then down. So this one was about a month sideways. This one here, two months. We'll see if it continues to go sideways or if we'll get that big squeeze, which I'm expecting, I'm hoping for. And before that, we had you know a couple other areas too where we're a little sideways, <laughs> right? So, and this one, my biggest one so far. My biggest one so far right here in 2020, August, right, September, August, right, end of August coming into September. And even if we go back before that to the end of July, really, we had a high of 16, 16,500. Let's round that, right? We go to a high of 18. So we made 1,500, but that's not a huge incline. And between you know, let's say August 1st, all the way to, to uh, 2021, January, or the end of January, might I say, we basically were sideways. So am I worried about this right here? No, I'm not. I've been sideways before for five months, down, up, down, and sideways for five months before. So being that we're in this sideways period for two months, and, and unlike this area here, I'm not dropping off. I'm holding sideways. So you know, can we see the flat top breakout and continue progressing upwards? You know, who knows? Maybe in two months, we'll come back and we're at 80K. I mean, nothing is nothing will surprise me in this market. This market is incredible. I love it. It's beautiful. And so I'll continue keeping on, continue moving forward, continue finding ways to be better. And uh, yeah, so that's going to do it for this one. I hope some of this, uh, some of you guys out there who are in a similar situation or even in a situation that might be a little bit uh, worse, right? In terms of where you are, are you losing uh, on a daily basis? Let's use this as an encouragement. Let's look to be better. Let's look to, to keep improving, keep fighting because this is what it's all about, man. To become a profitable trader, to keep pushing, to stay profitable. This is what is necessary and I'm looking to do everything 
to keep pushing that right so that's gonna do it for me it's been rt guys it's been a good one and i am of course signing out